got it. Oops. Oh, Lord. This chair is going to go someday. Hi, guys. It is another cold midwinter night here in early December. That would be a Friday night. We're up to Friday, December 9th, 2022, I believe. So, uh, I already punched out my medium.com doomer rant of the day this morning, but now, since the sun has set at 4.30, uh, time to do what I do every Friday, and we're actually going to leave medium.com and head back over to mongabay.com, uh, checking in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls for their weekly cavalcade of catastrophe unfolding on this collapsing planet and uh, there's a full we have a full buggy here today as it were so I'm gonna put the little dog up and uh, we're gonna go over to merry old England merry old England sometimes known as zombie island you notice that Andy the gardener is no longer speaking to me uh, I insulted Andy the gardener. Oh, well, it was nice knowing you, Andy. I knew at some point <laughs> that you would get insulted. So Andy will not have a comment on this uh, story. <clears throat> All right. We're going to find out. This is actually a podcast that you can find on mangabay.com. True eco-crime in the U. UK, Into the Wasteland, Part 1, and this picture, you would think it was somewhere like New Delhi, India, but I guess it's somewhere out in the country in England. <clears throat> in a three-part true eco-crime series from Manga Base Podcast, investigative journalists trace England's towering illegal waste problem. The country is facing a mountain of waste problems, but fly tipping, fly tipping, the, the, the people in England, we say the word dump, they say the word tip, I believe. Fly tipping might not be one you've heard of. It is the clandestine, illegal dumping of household and business waste even dead animals in the countryside, in a country that throws away more plastic per person than anywhere else in the world, fly tipping has become a much more serious and dangerous problem lately with the involvement of criminal elements seeking easy profit. On this episode, a mild-mannered English IT professional shares how he's gone to great lengths and has had to run for his life for exposing the people behind the rubbishing of the country's farms, fields, and public spaces. And so this next one, we're going to go from uh, the podcast you know, so Manga Bay also has a YouTube channel, and so what they're doing in this week's, uh, it's just a little five-minute video, which, which uh, says everything you need to know about greenwashing and wood pellets, otherwise known as biomass. We have a whistleblower from... <clears throat> A corporation you have never heard of called Enviva. Enviva's claim of being good for the planet, all nonsense, otherwise known as unadulterated horse shit. Complete pack of just, I mean, is greenwashing lies rammed down your throat a wood pellet company, a biomass, you know, burn the planet to save the planet, a uh, giant corporation claiming to be sustainable, 
as uh, wood pellets, you know, the price of gas, uh, you know, over there in Europe. And so would the market for wood pellets going through the roof and where do you think a lot of these wood pellets are coming from? They're coming from over here in the colonies. And this is particularly looking at uh, the, the YouTube video and this article are looking at this place in North Carolina. So if you want to see, just if you, if you have any doubt what greenwashing lies looks like, go watch this video over there on Manga Bay's video, Manga Bay's YouTube channel. <clears throat> Inviva is the largest maker of wood pellets burned for energy in the world. The company has, from its inception, touted its green credentials. It says it does not use big whole trees, but only uses wood waste, tops, limbs, thinnings, and those low value smaller trees and the production of woody biomass burned in former coal power plants in the UK, EU, and Asia. It says it only sources wood from areas where trees will be regrown and that it does not contribute. A wood pellet maker, the largest wood pellet maker in the world, does not contribute to deforestation. However, in first ever interviews with a whistleblower who worked within Enviva plant management, Manga Bay contributor Justin Castanoso has been told that all, as in every single one of these Enviva claims are unadulterated horseshit. And if anybody has any question, just go on the video and watch it. <clears throat> In, a, in addition, a major re recent scientific study finds that Enviva is contributing to deforestation in the U.S. Southeast. Do you think so? Uh, statements by the whistleblower have been confirmed by Manga Bay's own observations at a November 2022 forest clear cut in North Carolina. These findings are especially important now as the EU considers the future of forest biomass burning as a sustainable, sustainable form of renewable energy. Uh, if you ever hear the word biomass, that means dead trees. Oh, uh, we talked about this story last week. I, anyway, so we don't need to repeat it. Uh, you know, talking about shark finning. Good Lord. Uh, okay. So, you know, all this crap about wood pellet. Uh, being green, clean, sustainable energy. So I'm sure you've uh, seen these greenwashing horseshit stories uh, over the past few years, and you'll see more of them about a great way to, you know, to help with problems like the uh, fly tipping problem in England, perhaps, is just burn the trash, just burn the Himalayan mountains of garbage <coughs> all over this planet and just turn that, just burn the garbage and turn all of that burning plastic and the good God, who knows what all else, burn that and turn that into energy. Lord knows we have enough of that on the planet. Well, <coughs> we have a problem for anybody believing for one minute burning garbage to save the planet. Uh, a waste to, as waste to energy 
incinerators spread in Southeast Asia, so do concerns. Widely, you know, already in use in countries including Japan, South Korea, and Northern Europe, waste to energy technology is now making inroads in Southeast Asia where it is presented as a tried and tested green energy solution. Thailand plans to build 79 of these waste to energy plants in upcoming years. And there are at least 17 proposed for Indonesia. Concerns about environmental and public health impacts have already led to protest and project delays. In Europe, the technology's climate-friendly credentials are being called into question, huh? with several countries imposing or considering carbon taxes on waste to energy facilities. Good, I mean, how stupid do they think we are? All right, well, let's just keep on with this. Uh, you know, the European Union, uh, I don't think the UK is part of the EU anymore. I have a hard time keeping up over there. So I don't think this is about, includes the UK. As the European Union finalizes its renewable energy plan, forest advocates condemn biomass. The EU hopes to finalize its revised renewable energy directive, otherwise known as RED, soon, even as forest advocates urge last minute changes to significantly cut the use of woody biomass for energy and make deep reductions in the EU subsidies to the wood pellet industry. Hmm. Forest advocates are citing a new commentary published in the journal Nature that argues that the EU's continued expansive commitment to burning forest biomass for energy, otherwise, you know, burn down the planet to save the planet, will endanger forests. Hmm in the European Union, the U.S., and elsewhere, resulting in a major loss in both global carbon storage and biodiversity. Yes, changing, <clears throat> yes, changing red to meet forest advocate recommendations seems unlikely at this point. Hmm with some policymakers arguing that woody biomass use is the only way the EU can achieve its 2030 coal reduction target. The woody biomass industry is pressing for sustained biomass use and, wow, for continued subsidies. Uh, Russia's threat of reducing or cutting off its supply of natural gas to the EU this winter is also an issue. Uh, in the EU today, 60%, 60% of energy now classified as renewable comes from burning biomass. And if red is... <clears throat> approved is drafted, bioenergy use is projected to double between now and 2050, according to the just published Nature Commentary. So I guess if it doubles from 60%, that in the next few years, 120%, 120% of energy classified as renewable will be coming from burning biomass. And 
Let's see, I want to <clears throat> stay on this line so I don't uh, keep uh, moving, you know, I, I wish sometimes this was arranged differently, but anyway, somewhere in here, they have another story, uh, which I don't really need, need to read it, but it's a whole nother story. Uh, about how firewood uh, is ramping up uh, all over, I think, the UK and Europe as more and more people, uh, as more and more people just, you know, chopping down uh, their own forests and just burning them directly. Uh, you know, I mean, there's plenty of uh, firewood uh, places right here in uh, upstate New York. It's not like England and the European Union are the only people cutting down their trees. Uh, so anyone who thinks that firewood burning is only going on there in Africa. <clears throat> so we have all of these stories, all of these stories. And then, <laughs> and then in the middle of this, we have this amazing first step as EU law cracks down on deforestation-linked imports. Huh. The European Union has agreed to adopt a law that will ban the trade of commodities associated with deforestation and forest degradation. Hmm. Pretty strange. The law will be the first of its kind in the world and aims to tackle deforestation caused by the EU's consumption of various agricultural commodities that are the main drivers of forest loss, including palm oil, cattle, rubber, soy, and coca. Uh, I guess, obviously, uh, the EU does not consider uh, wood pellets. They uh, obviously wood pellets, otherwise known as dead trees, uh, do not count as a commodity associated with deforestation and forest degradation. Yes, you ought to go on that. Uh, on that video and take a look at how serious the European Union is on cracking down on deforestation linked imports, unadulterated horseshit. They are lying sacks of shit. Do you get it? As Bill Hicks would say. All right, I think we get it that the EU and the UK are a bunch of planet-eating, green-washing, lying sacks of shit. Let's move on to other news. <clears throat> Let's go head up to the top of the world. Melting ice created the perfect storm for a rapidly acidifying Arctic Ocean. The Arctic Ocean has grown more acidic at a surprising rate in recent years, three times faster than the rest of the global ocean. Melting sea ice has exposed the top level of the Arctic Ocean to air rich with carbon dioxide, creating a layer that sopped up carbon from the atmosphere. Increased acidity hampers the ability of marine organisms to build their shells, causing ripple effects through the Arctic food web. I'm sure it does. Fast little dog, are you bored? All right, well, I was, I, we, we actually do, uh, every once in a while, we have some good news. I was just reading this article in the mainstream media about how uh, Sotheby's real estate uh, was selling 
this chain of islands, this chain of uh, uninhabited, you know, idyllic islands off the coast of uh, Indonesia in the middle of a marine reserve up for sale and all of these billionaires were fighting all over each other to buy their own private island in paradise that we shall see uh, about this. Indonesian officials have sought, have sought to neuter an apparent bid to auction off private tourism enclaves to foreign investors in a marine reserve in the country's east. Shares of Bali-based developer PT Leadership Islands had been up for bidding via Sotheby's auctions in New York starting today, as a matter of fact. But the Deputy Environment Minister said this has now been annulled. The, uh, the corporation holds the rights to develop tourism facilities in the Weedy Islands, but not to sell off individual islands to foreign investors, which is against in Indonesian law. The Weedy Islands are part of the Marine Reserve in the Pacific Coral Triangle. Uh, and most are uninhabited and hold high social, cultural, and livelihood importance for local fishing communities. So my guess is, you know, uh, they're just going to do a little, uh, you know, playing around and, you know, fudging, pushing numbers around on a paper, and they're going to go right ahead and develop these islands. And you're never going to know uh, who, where the money's coming from to develop them, who is making money off of the projects. Uh, I would get into the whole discussion of uh, the old uh, tried and true real estate scam called straw man buyers of real estate. Uh, this will be a case of a straw man that the islands will get developed and a few years later they'll just go underwater from sea level rise anyway. And there you go. Oh, all right. Uh, really, I'm, you know, I, I haven't decided whether I should just completely boycott this unadulterated horseshit dog and pony show uh, going on up there in Canada this week, I guess. COP15, uh, it, 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 anyway, just, just so, just, just, I mean, I'll, I'll go ahead and read this, but I just want to explain this to anybody who does not understand this. I know Sandy is getting ready to have her show on COP15, so I don't even know if Sandy Shellis understands this. I guess we'll find out when we watch her show. So Sandy, uh, I, I hope... This won't, uh, well, maybe this will turn into a lively debate. For anybody who does not understand this, COP15, the United Nations Biodiversity Conference in Canada, but being somehow led by China, China leading a UN conference on biodiversity protection. Uh, it, 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 it is so hilarious on such a deep, sick, twisted, dark, ironic level. It, 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 it is the ultimate, the ultimate slap in the face to this planet. It, 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 it is an insult to Mother Earth. Uh, it, it is it is going to be the single biggest orgy of greenwashing, bigger than COP twenty seven. Uh, it, it's going to be 
just a flat out symposium of unadulterated horseshit that is not going to do one thing on any level to make one iota of difference towards saving biodiversity on this planet and will probably Oh, you know, when you factor in the greenwashing, will probably increase the rate of biodiversity destruction on the planet. But with that as a backdrop, what's going on up there? Scientists plead for protection of peatlands, the world's carbon capsules. Yes. <clears throat> as COP. 15 begins with a group of researchers from more than a dozen countries are calling for worldwide peatland protection and restoration for the protection of species and because of the vast amounts of carbon they contain. Yes, more than 40 scientists have issued a statement noting that peatlands contain twice as much carbon as is found in all of the world's forests. As long as the peatlands remain waterlogged, that carbon will stay in the soil, but if they're degraded or drained, as around 12% of the world's peatlands already have been, they quickly become a major source of atmospheric carbon. Uh, what is it? Is it in? I'm pretty sure it's in the Congo that's getting ready to have its peatlands just completely uh, raped and pillaged. All right, here one, one more. Okay, th th this is really uh, th this is really about all you need to say about COP15. Human, human justice element is key to stemming biodiversity loss. Yes, in a new paper, a team of scientists argue that efforts to halt biodiversity loss and aid recovery must strive to put both nature and people on a positive path forward. Yes, according to the scientists, this can be done by confronting the main drivers of biodiversity loss. Okay, there are 8 billion main drivers of biodiversity loss on planet Earth. They're called humans. There is one way to halt biodiversity loss, as proven in Chernobyl and the Korean demilitarized zone. Uh, there is one way to halt biodiversity loss on the planet, that is to get the humans out of the habitat. Humans are the cause of biodiversity loss. As long as you have one human inside any ecosystem, you are going to have biodiversity loss. What a bunch of crap. COP15 has the aim of getting humans to live in harmony with nature by the year 2050. Yeah, <laughs> we have 28 years. We have 28 years to teach humans how to live in harmony with nature when there's going to be what, a billion or two more humans than there are now. Uh... You might have heard about this new criminal code in Indonesia outlawing sex between uh, people who are not married, including 
tourists and foreigners living in Indonesia, if you're caught having sex and you're not married, you're going to jail, well, that's getting all the attention in the mainstream media, so you have to come over here to Manga Bay for uh, this story. New criminal code rings alarms for environmental protection in Indonesia. Indonesia has passed an overhauled criminal code that experts and activists say will weaken environmental protections and make it easier to persecute environmental defenders. Among the controversial provisions in the heavily criticized bill is an exemption from prosecution for companies that violate environmental laws, reduced punishment, and the choice to pick a fine over a jail sentence not to mention a higher burden of proof for environmental crimes. It could also be used to prosecute environmental defenders who protest public works projects on the pretext of insulting the president. I think the president's name is Joko Widodo. I mean, how can you insult somebody with the name Joko Widodo. Anyway, uh, here's more COP27. Uh, let's just do one, uh, one more. I realize I'm talking to myself and I'm freezing. We're going to wrap it up with Bitcoin mining. <clears throat> Climate damage <coughs> from Bitcoin mining grew more than 125 times worse <coughs> in just five years. To this day, I've never understood what Bitcoin mining is. Whatever the hell Bitcoin mining really is, the negative climate impacts of mining the cryptocurrency Bitcoin have grown rapidly over time with carbon emissions per Bitcoin, per coin multiplying 126 times from 2016 to 2021. During that window, the climate damage of mining one Bitcoin averaged 35% of the coin's value, similar to the environmental cost of unsustainable products like crude oil and beef. Reducing Bitcoin's massive carbon footprint may require international regulation unless the crypto currently shifts to a more energy efficient mining system. Oh yeah. <laughs> Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Good God, have we lost our minds. Anyway, get out there and enjoy your climate destroying Bitcoin. While you still can, I'm going to go uh, enjoy a climate-destroying margarita while I still can. And then head over to Netflix to while away another evening in the collapse. Bye, guys.